How's it going, Internet? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation, get that imagination all cranked up, get into some creativity, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Edward Gorey. If you're not familiar with his beautiful, macabre, gothic work, check right over here. He is a phenomenal illustrator, and I really love his style. Um, I, I always kind of blend uh, his work with a lot of uh, Tim Burton sketches as well. I feel like there's a lot of uh, similarities between the two, and, uh, or at least in the same family. Um, and I love his stuff. He's just really got a unique sense of, of crazy style. And uh, you can see that, that he really brings his own, uh, his own sensibilities to his work. There's, there's definitely you know, a sense of ima uh, anatomy and foundations and perspective and uh, weight and everything through it, but he really just uh, more so over everything goes with his own uh, style and really has that kind of lean forward um, with all of his work. And I think it's really something that, that I personally have been kind of trying to decide um, in my own work, just where that wants, where that line is. I sometimes feel that I get lost a little bit too much in the in the fundamentals and don't really fit into what I aesthetically uh, view as my own style as, as uh, the most important thing. And uh, when I look at his work, I always go, you know what, I feel like he's true to himself. He's true to what he wants to put out there. Um, he's not overly worried about, uh, you know, composition or layout or, or uh, you know, anatomy or weight or lighting or perspective or anything like that not to say that they aren't working but you can see that the main focus is uh, the feeling or the style um, and I think that's that's great in his work but I did want to share a quote with you guys from him and that was uh, if something doesn't creep into a drawing that you're not prepared for you might as well not have drawn it I thought that was a really interesting um, little tidbit about the creative world because uh, there's all these you know it, sometimes you'll sit down and you just don't know what you, you're going to put out and you just uh, go with whatever it is and other times you'll have a great idea um, and then that sparks it and you almost have it completely built in your mind before you even sit down but I think that there's something uh, to, to be said for for the quote that he gives of you never and this is where I'm at in my journey maybe you guys are, are different um, almost every time I sit down to work there's always something that either is a workaround because of some constraint because of uh, my life or the way that I'm thinking at the the moment or uh, because there's something with a rig if I'm animating or there's something with the uh, proportions or the utensils that I'm using or something that that doesn't allow it to necessarily be what I'm going for there's those kind of happy tree accidents um, where you're like oh I didn't mean to do that but then it sparks something in your mind where you're like but you know what I could do with that I could do this and this and I think that's um having that that looseness and that ability to be flexible with your work and to also continue to always be thinking differently throughout your um, creations is a really interesting part of the creative process so I really like that I hope um maybe that clicks something in your guys is because it's a, a kind of a different perspective or a different kind of quote a lot of times um, we'll see kind of a, a familiar pattern with a lot of the quotes that we look at from different artists and everything but I thought this one was, was unique I really hadn't heard anyone talk about that um, something uh, creeping into your work that you're maybe not pre prepared for I thought that was an interesting way to put that but that being said let's go ahead and get into some animation this is the uh, Maka rig or the mechanic rig it's a free rig you can grab over at creative crash I will throw a link to more stuff about Edward Gorey and this rig as well if you guys want to play around with it in the description below and if you're not familiar with what we'll be doing for the rest of the video is we give ourselves 48 frames give or take sometimes a little more sometimes a little I don't think we ever go under 48 um, we uh, kind of go from there I go off and I find a rig that I've never used before it's a free resource for you guys to play around with as well and uh, it's just kind of hang out with me while I animate a little bit of over the shoulder uh, talking through the process talking through something that has to do with the creative world in general and uh, the main goal of doing these videos is to hopefully encourage you guys and inspire you to go off and create something uh, unique and amazing using your own imagination and your own creativity each and every day so that you're taking another step in your journey to master whatever it is uh, that you guys want to be uh, in the future so that being said, let's go ahead and play around. I thought we would do just a heavy walk cycle that's maybe a little bit slower. So let's go with 16s for this. So that'll be kind of on eights. So I think this one should be a little bit slower. Yeah, here, let's get started. Let's try to do, now there's not 
not a lot of controllers with this one. Um, so we got to be aware, but we'll still want to try and get some unique posing out of this if we can. Because unfortunately, this only has a rotate uh, Y, so we don't have a whole lot. And we're going to want to favor that front planted foot and keep that. Excuse me. Uh, over a little bit as well. <coughs> Man, a little bit of a cough. Haven't coughed all day as soon as I come on video. That's life for you. Okay, so I think that's a all right pose to start off with. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of controllers that we really have to manipulate here with this one, so we'll use what we got. And let's go ahead and grab everything. Make sure we only have our nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and polygons selected. Before we do anything, though, let's go ahead and save our file. Uh, we are using Autodesk Maya 2014 for today's video. If you want more information on Autodesk or Maya, check out the links in the description below. And let's grab everything with only our nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and polygons selected. We'll go to frame zero, and we'll hit S on our keyboard to set our first key. And then let's uh, start building this thing. It's going to say 16, so I'll go ahead and push and wiggle. Oops. What's going on here? Okay, let's delete that. Let's see. Well, it was working before. What do I do here? All right, I'll take a couple steps back here. Okay, that's still working there. So maybe okay. I'm gonna go back a few more steps here. Where were we? Okay, that's still. Okay, I just rolled back. Um, something was going on there, so we're just gonna uh, redo that posing a little bit. Just re-referenced in or opened up the file here. Uh, so let's just tweak that a little bit more. And that's why it's good to, uh, I always try and save right before I set any keys as well so I can reopen that uh, file if need be. Because um, sometimes, especially playing around with rigs that you've never used before, there's going to be different things that come up. I always want to try to save multiple versions and to save often as well whenever you can. Okay, so before we go any further, I think I'm going to keep everything with just at one. And let's uh, grab this one and this one. We'll go to frame one and we'll hit, hit uh, S on our keyboard to save that and make sure those are still working. Okay, so unfortunately, um, timing is going to be a little bit different with this one. It's still going to be in here but we're just gonna have one frame off on everything because I think for some reason if we go to zero and this you'll notice this sometimes um, with different rigs as well if you roll back to frame zero um, when everything starts at frame one sometimes things uh, get a little funky just with how they're built um, so we're gonna try and work around that and we're also not gonna grab every controller and hit S we're just gonna grab the individual ones and uh, keep those so that seems to uh, hopefully fix things let's see we can still do that. Okay, good. All right. And then let's go to, uh, let's push that back a little bit more. We'll make these bigger steps here before we get there. All right, we'll grab this one and then we'll go to 17. Like I said, it's going to be about one frame off from usual. So we'll, do, we'll go from 1 to 49 instead of from 0 to 48, which is fine. Should be 16, so it'd be 55. This would be 65. Is that right? 49 plus 6 would be 56 plus uh, 66. There we go. And that fits. No. 6 would be 55. 65. No. There we go. I just want to build up. That's why it's 
it's always good to remember doing your math because evidently Mars is no good. Uh, quick journal and we'll go 17. I think what I'm going to do here too is hold each step for about what, three, three frames each one. Just slow it down. This one for three, this one for three, for three, for three, we'll do that again. So let's see that. So we're actually going to be stopping with each one. Okay, and let's go ahead and we'll do some passing positions here. Again, we're just going to go back and lock in feet on each one of these frames just by hitting S on our keyboard. And let's go here into the middle. Why not? Let's go six frames from there. So frame 10, that's when we lift up. And six frames from there, that would be uh, 44. This guy, and six frames will lift it up, and six frames from there will lift it up. Okay, and let's start doing a little bit with the uh, hips here, the main root. from there would be 33, we'll go down, and there's going to be one here, and 41, we'll go up, and we'll bring it back to where we started there, and 8 frames from there will be 3 to 7, we'll go up, down, almost at the same time. graph editor and clean that up and I think I'm gonna uh, delay this about four frames
Six. Push it over. And that's this one. Point two. Push it over. And point fifty eight. And push that over. And it's zeroed out. And let's look at our translate X here. We'll probably do less of that. Let's do a little bit less of that, scale it back a little bit more. Okay, let's go ahead and save our file while we're working there, and let's do some rotate here. So we've got it rotated, we can probably do a little bit more since we don't have any other rotation that we can really use here. Um, and let's make sure we bring that back to the end here. And then we want to go at 17 and push it that way. And then 33 and push it that way. 49 that way. And then we go back again, right? Okay. And let's clean that up a little bit more. It's starting to work. It's funky having to set everything since we're not only normally in. I'm so used to working in 12s and I'm so used to working evenly, pushing it over, it's uh, making my math brain work a little bit differently here, but that's okay. And then for this one, let's go ahead and set it where it is. And instead of being on 17, let's put it on 9 here. So it'll rotate this way. See how that feels. Let's see what that what it would look like doing the opposite of what it's doing right now. Let's see if we like that better. delay it two frames. Let's see. And then we'll want to bring that up a little bit more. Take a weight. And then we can do this one. So Thank 
been all down here, up, and down there, and back again. And let's see how it feels. Alright, it's a little too much, so I'm going to scale it back a little more. But I think that works, and we can maybe delay that frame as well. Swing up a little bit higher. Let's crank that back up a little bit. And maybe a little less down. And I think we'll probably do a little bit of swing. Over there, and over there, and over there, and back again. Let's see how it feels. Um, let's, let's see. Let's push it back to a little bit more. Sixteen frames from that is going to be four. We do a stream that way. Let's see how that feels. We'll probably even push it back to there. side. That feels alright. Maybe we could do a little bit less side to side. Yeah, or maybe a little bit more up and down. And that's the thing, you have to kind of pick which camera angle you're going to play to. Your team. maybe uh, tone down the rotate uh, Y on the main controller and tone it up on the, the basket controller a little bit more. Let's see. Mm, might be a little too much to scale it back a little bit more. Let's see. Alright, and let's do this one. So we'll have Seven, we'll have it go up. And then at what do we got? Which one do we do our extreme down on twenty one? So six frames after that would be twenty seven. We'll have it go down. Go every 
think the idea is there, but not quite working just yet. So I'll keep tweaking this thing. Let's see. Yeah, it's too delayed, so I need to push it forward about two frames. that little bit of a hitch just because we're ending and going back in so we'll have to clean that up as we go but I think we'll start to work a little bit and let's see if we can't do a little bit of side to side here so we'll go back Sixteen frames from that would be uh, twenty-five. Go that way. Sixteen frames from that, thirty-one, forty-one. Go that way. And fifty-seven. Go that way, and then back again. I think so. something here it's not working uh, let's just try one thing real quick just delay that one frame and see if we still get that hitch or not let's see there's something where it just goes it like locks in here it shouldn't do that what am I, what's making it do that? Did we just start it and load it that way? That might be a little better. 
place a little better. Too harsh on that. It's like, uh oh. Okay, so let's uh, take another look back at the feet now. I want to make those heavier steps. So, two frames before. we get even more from there but at least we get some of that weight in that ending step here so let's see okay and now let's try and put a little more of an arc in there in our translate lines here because right now I feel like they're really kind of locking off so we want to do a little more Two frames here, and we'll, let's do the rotate first before we do anything else. So I want to drag that foot back there, and here we'll lift it up, point it down, drag it back there, lift it up, point it down, and this one, drag it back there. Some form of that's a little bit better. And let's grab all of our tangent handles here and instead of making it so sharp, do a little bit of a curve here. So we'll push them like that. We'll grab all of these guys. We'll grab all of these tangent handles here. So we have a little bit of an overshoot here. Let's go ahead and look at that now. Okay, and then we're going to tone down the uh, rotate X as well. So I'll just take it universally and we'll scale it back a little bit more. Less drag and less flip forward. Let's go ahead and save our file, and let's start uh, seeing if we can do some stuff with the toe here. Lift that up, and I think the one frame later, lift that up, and let's do that one. That way we have the foot contacting and then the toe, just break up that movement a little bit more. Drag the toe here, and we'll drag the toe there. Let's look at that now. Trying to add some weight to those steps. I feel 
this a little better. All right, now let's look at this one. And we'll drag the toe here, lift it up there, and then one frame after the foot contacts with the ground. Not that we have a little bit of successive movement in there. Drag that there, lift it up here, lift it up there. A little bit more here, just because it's going to be a little looping more in the middle, so you're not out there. All right, and let's look at that toe again. So it is two frames for that last one, just so that uh, it cycles a little better. And let's take a look again. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And then there's a, what's this? Is this hill supposed to be a heel controller? Let's see what it does. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe we could little tiny bit of that in there so let's see maybe just at 12 we can just add a teeny bit of that in and we'll want to zero it out here just to loosen up that movement Get three frames after there so that'd be four three maybe four four a little bit of that in there. Zero it out there. And let's look at that. Just loosens up that portion of the foot move a little bit more. So we get you know, 25 and 28. We're going to add a little bit of I think it's supposed to be heel, but they put a hill. It's kind of funny. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Just to loosen up that area. And 60, we'll drag that there. And zero it out there. Okay. Loosens it up and adds a little more weight to those steps there, just by doing a little bit of that. All right, I think that's most of the controllers that we have. So let's go ahead and save our file and then let's see if we can get into a little bit of the geometry itself. Hmm. I want to be careful with this though. So I can do maybe a little bit of making it See if we can do a little bit of rotate. X here. A little bit there. Bit there. Bit here. zero it out here. Let's see if that loosens up that area a little bit more. It does, but maybe we'll invert it. Let's see. Okay, that works a little bit. Just to loosen up that area a little bit more. So it's not so stiff. But again, it's a machine, so we got to be careful that we don't do it but we're trying to give it some personality here so okay now let's look at this thing here maybe we could do a little bit do a little bit with Kita. Forward. 
just doing the mesh. I kind of want the ground bolt to move in here. Tilt it forward a little bit. Go back. I mean, again, we'll probably scale this back quite a bit, but we can loosen that up just to add a little bit more there. And again, this isn't a real controller. It's just really moving the uh, polygons, so we got to be careful. We should add a little bit of looseness to our movement here. Let's do it again. Here, let's see. All right, I'm gonna scale it back here. So there's a little bit of uh, I feel like I should maybe go back a little bit more, put less forward. So let's see. There we go. Just so it's got a little tilt to it. All right, I think we'll keep it kind of like that. So. Uh, take a look back at where we started we're looking at the beautiful work of Edward Gorey and he said if something doesn't creep into a drawing that you're not prepared for you might as well not have drawn it I think that's a really interesting uh, commentary on the creative process and to always be open uh, to those happy little accidents or those uh, unplanned events while you're creating and uh, trying to use them to your benefit and that's gonna help your creative process and keep you loose and keep you uh, flexible uh, always different ideas for how to utilize that imagination so thanks a lot for uh, watching you guys are amazing remember if you're watching this you are the creative future and I hope that you're taking another step in your journey uh, to master whatever medium it is that you guys are passionate about and uh, thanks again for all the likes and subscribes you guys are amazing I love you lots and we will see you for some more animation tomorrow